So that's only showing peak torque there was 100, it looked like 176 pound-feet of torque. So that's not a gain at all in power. So if your car's not running like, well, kind of like mine is, this G35 behind me, it's idling a little bit funny, the performance just doesn't feel like it's right, well, we're gonna try these two products and see if that's gonna help us out. Today, we are gonna be using CRC throttle body and MAF sensor cleaner. I've never used these products before, but I'm gonna see if these cleaning products can help with making my car run a little bit better. So you're gonna be coming along with me and we're gonna see if these products do help out with your vehicle's engine performance. Now, according to CRC here, the throttle body cleaner will improve performance. So let's see if that actually does that. And the CRC cleaner is just an airflow sensor or mass airflow sensor cleaner. So that's gonna be the MAF sensor and I'll show you exactly where all of these things are in your car. So here are some of the tools you're gonna to need. It's ideal if you have a full socket set. You're probably gonna to need to have some longer extensions or sockets to get inside some of the deeper spots since we're gonna be removing the air intake. And you're also gonna benefit from using your classic screwdrivers, flathead, whatever really depends on what your car takes, you're probably gonna need some of these as well. Okay, so your engine bay is gonna be a little bit different than mine, but essentially we're gonna be removing this whole section right here. So this is the air intake. The mass sen the sensor on my car is, happens to be right here. The throttle body is gonna be back there. These are the two parts that we're gonna be cleaning with the two products that I have purchased. Essentially, we're gonna have to be locating a big plastic compartment, if you wanna call it that, that connects to a hose, a big thick hose like this, and it goes into the heart of the engine. That's usually the way the air intake is set up on most cars. All right, so we're gonna start with removing this piece right here since it's connected to the air intake duct. That's where your car sucks in the air. So we're gonna start with removing this part right here. So this is just gonna pop right off, as you can tell. So now what we're gonna be looking at is that piece right there. Now with most of these intake ducts here, you're gonna have a couple little clips. You see one right there, you see one just to the right of it right here, and you'll generally find another one underneath or to the side of it. We're gonna pop those clips back and remove this piece. So since you're at it, it's not a bad idea to change your air filter as well. This one, as you can tell, it's pretty damn dirty. You can't even you can't even see through the inside of it. So we're gonna be replacing that. And it's not a bad idea since you're gonna be in this area anyways to give that a brand new air filter. It'll help the car breathe a little bit better. Okay, so now that we removed the front part right here with the air filter, the MAF sensor, is this thing. So usually they're gonna be located right after the air filter area. This one happens to be just right above it, so right behind, right when it starts to suck in. This is a pretty important part. If this goes bad or it's all wacky, it's gonna probably end up making your vehicle not drive very nicely. So before you remove the rest of this part, you're gonna have to remove the, air, the um, MAF sensor and just be careful not to damage it when you remove it. So for this MAF sensor, there are two screws on either side that are Phillips. You're gonna go and grab your Phillips screwdriver and remove those. Okay, now that that's out, we can go and remove the MAF sensor. Once you've removed the MAF sensor, this is just, yours might look a little bit different, but the idea is gonna stay the same. So now you're gonna go and grab your MAF cleaner and you're gonna be spraying it into that little hole there and right here. You don't wanna to go too overboard, but enough just to clean the main parts or the important parts of what needs to be cleaned on the MAF sensor. You're gonna spray it in there. And right in the middle. All right, so now that that's done, 
We can put that aside and now move on to the throttle body. Okay, so we've removed the MAF sensor and we put it off to the side, maybe put a shop towel under so it doesn't get dirty and that it's not touching anything where the crucial bits are exposed. Now we're gonna remove the rest of the intake here. So as you can see, there are a couple different screws located on my car. Now yours is obviously going to be quite a bit different and that's fine, but you're just gonna have to do some digging and see where those screws are and unscrew and unbolt everything as necessary. You might see a couple clamps there. If you see these clamps, you're gonna to wanna to undo them. They do spread out to make it easier to remove things and pop things in. So we're gonna start locating all of these hidden screws. We're gonna go ahead and remove this whole bit. Don't forget, you might see a couple of these vacuum hoses or these hoses going to your air box. Don't worry about that. You can go ahead and unplug that because when we assemble it all together, it's gonna happen. It's gonna be as if nothing ever happened there. So now we're moving on to the throttle body. This is one of those clamps I was talking about. It will be easier if you just grab one of these, push it to the back and then remove the hose accordingly. Just like that, it's all up. Another thing too, now that you've got your air box removed, this is also a great opportunity to do some inspecting of the engine block here. You can look for some sweating, some oil leaks that would be hard to notice with the air box there. So I'm gonna do just that. We are now going to be taking out the throttle body right here, which you can tell is pretty grody. It actually looks really caked with tar and all this debris and whatnot. So I have a feeling that the throttle body cleaner is definitely gonna help out with making this car run a little bit better, but we're gonna have to see if this is just a gimmick or if it's actually gonna help us out here. Okay, so this part's gonna be important. With most of the newer cars, they're electronic throttle bodies. The last thing you wanna do is start forcing them with your hand. You wanna be very gentle with how you apply the throttle body cleaner. When you lift the flap, be very gentle with it, don't force it. That could potentially break it and give you even more problems in the future. So, when we're gonna clean it, we're gonna be gentle around in the beginning at first, and we're gonna open it ever so slightly and spray in the inside as evenly as we can. But just be mindful of that, not to force the throttle body when you're opening it. Okay, so now it's time for the throttle body cleaner. Go ahead and open that, and we're gonna be spraying it just around the throttle body for now, and then we'll make our way in slowly. Before we do that, you know what? It's a good idea to maybe get some shop towels and just put it underneath there so that you don't damage anything else. After the first couple sprays there, I've got a lot of green gunk. I don't know what the heck that stuff is, but this is pretty dirty. So that shows me that the previous owner didn't really do much to maintain this car, but uh, it does seem to be working quite a bit in removing some of that gunk. As you can tell, it's not as dirty anymore as it was before, but still, it does have quite a bit of green around there. Green, ugh, nasty. That's a better, better view there. Lots of gunk in there, it's crazy. So I'm gonna keep on spraying that and uh, hopefully clean out as much as I can. I'm gonna go a step further and I'm actually gonna remove the entire part. So rather than just leave it on here and spray from the outside, I'm gonna see if I can remove the entire throttle body and get it from the rear as well. So here it is. So that's the front and that's the back. Yeah, so I'm gonna clean that out. Look at all that gunk right there. That's so crazy. So let's go and clean this a lot better now. So here's the after. I cleaned around and it's a hell of a lot cleaner, especially the back part. It was just black on the inside and now it's got that nice little aluminum look, the OEM aluminum look. Still not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better now. Sorry the, the lighting isn't the best here, but either way you can kind of get the idea. 
it's a lot cleaner on the inside now. All right, so I got the throttle body back on, bolted it up nice and tight, not too tight, obviously you don't want to strip anything, but it's a hell of a lot cleaner now than it was before. Um, I personally don't think that these two products are going to make a single difference on this car. That's just my opinion. I'm a little bit skeptical, but anyhow, it's time to put everything back together and it's essentially the ex reverse order of what you did. You might have to do a little bit of fiddling around, but again, whatever you did at first, just do the reverse and then it'll pop all right back together. All right, we're all done. Let's go start it up and see what happens. Cross your fingers. <laughs> All right, well, it started up. I wouldn't say it started up the smoothest, but it's probably just relearning the map sensor here. But when I did start it, there was quite a bit of smoke that came out. But it seems to be a little bit better now. Now, I did have a check engine light on originally. That was still there. But I did notice, though, that the idle at cold start was a lot higher than it was before. Before it would be way lower, so that's interesting. But overall, it seems to be pretty smooth now. Engine sounds pretty healthy. And yeah, it just had that little hiccup at first, but it seems to be okay now. Okay, so we're in the GoPro now. The battery died on my DSLR camera. Here it is, we're idling pretty much at the ideal idle for these cars everything is smooth don't worry about the check engine light on that's been on for a while i'm going to see if i can connect my obd2 reader uh, so that we can be looking at some live data as we drive hopefully hopefully you can connect perfect so we've got 700 rpm right now map sensor is reading 0 0.49 coolant temperature 91 this o2 sensor is these things are all over the place, so that's obviously got to get changed. Ignition, ignition timing is at 10 degrees over top dead center. And our engine horsepower is right there. So let's go and see how this does. Okay, so so far I haven't really noticed too, too much, to be honest. Um, it seems to be driving the exact same as it was before. The VQs are kind of a smooth engine, so it's hard to tell, but right now we're doing okay so we're at just over 2,000 rpm going 80 kilometers an hour which is about 50 just under 50 miles per hour we have 7.8 liters per hundred kilometers engine temp is good our mass airflow sensor at this speed is reading 2.21 so we're gonna come to a stop and let's see if there's a difference all right so we're idling nicely again at 750 hopefully you can see that Car seems to be nice and smooth. Power wise, it feels about the same, not gonna lie. 8.7 liters, total average right now, 12.2 .12, liters per 100 kilometers. When I accelerate, our map sensor is going to 7.45. I do feel though that the power is still not there. I, this car, I did um, do some diagnostics on it before when I was peaking out at about 170 some horses. So that's not the full potential of this car. So I'm going to turn over here and we're going to do a little pull and see if that'll change. If those numbers will improve or if they'll get worse. So let's take a look. All right, here we go. Full throttle. So that's only showing peak torque there was a hundred it looked like 176 pound-feet of torque these cars have substantially more torque and more power than that rather I believe they're in the mid 200s for the D for the VQ 35 DE engine which is in this one that was at 170 some so that's not a gain at all in power Although the power delivery did seem pretty smooth, but right now I'm stepping on it 
And to be honest, the performance feels very, very similar to the way it was initially. So, I don't know, I'm kind of indifferent with this, uh, with this CRC throttle body and map sensor cleaner. It doesn't seem to be doing anything different to how this car is feeling and the numbers are kind of indicating that too on live timing. So anyway, back to the headquarters, also known as my parents' garage, to give the final verdict on these two cleaners. So yeah, it seems to idle a little bit better, but I wouldn't say that it was substantially better. It wasn't as rough of an idle, so I'll be honest there, but when it comes to performance, that this thing says will improve, if anything, I lost a little bit of power, which seems a bit weird. Maybe I touched something, maybe I damaged something, but I was very diligent and really gentle with everything that I did, and I didn't use any force, and I put everything back together. So, does this improve the performance of your car? No, if anything, it took power. Uh, does this make it idle a little bit better? I think it actually might. So, would I go out and spend 10 bucks on these cans or however much they cost? Maybe just to keep things clean for the mass airflow sensor or the MAF sensor, but for the throttle body cleaner, I don't think I would really go above and beyond and put your faith in this product to make your vehicle perform that much better. But anyhow, that was my results. Leave your comments down below and let me know what you have experienced with these guys. Have they helped your car out or did they make it worse? Let us know in the comments down below and also leave a like if this did help you guys out too. And don't forget to subscribe. 99% of you guys who watch my videos aren't subscribed to my channel. So do me a favor, go help me out. Subscribe to my channel here to see some more of these DIY and helpful tutorials. Until the next video, we'll see you next time.